Hello, beautiful people. My name is Shara Nicole, and welcome to my channel, The Fashionable Mommy. So in today's video, I'm going to be finally sharing my daughter's nursery. Um, I think it was in video two, I had highlighted some items that I picked up to decorate her nursery and due to COVID, a lot of things were not in stock and having to wait for certain things, but I'm finally done and we're going to get into it. But first, before I get into it, I kind of wanted to discuss my birthing story with you guys to kind of encourage you mamas, especially you African-American women out there. There is a huge disparity in our community where black women just aren't taken seriously during delivery. So I kind of want to get into that. And full disclaimer, before I get into that, let me just highlight that my prenatal um, care was wonderful. My OBs were awesome. You know, any concerns I had with them, and they're not an African-American practice, but I never had any concerns or any doubt that they didn't believe me. But let's kind of get into the story. So before I tell you about the day of delivery, let's kind of go back. When I was um, number four was a couple of months old. Yeah, I think he was probably like three or four months old. We were in church and we were told by the bishop, my aunt, that, you know, she had asked God to give us a daughter and God knew he could trust us with boys. And we had four sons at the time. And then she stopped and she said, but five is the number of grace. Your daughter is coming. And me and my husband looked at each other like, the devil is a liar. We ain't having no more kids. We wasn't even planning on having number four, especially that fast after number three. Like, we ain't having number five. So what they say, tell God <laughs> what you want to do and he will show you what he's going to do, right? So anyway, two weeks later, I found out I'm pregnant with number five. Quite devastated. But at this point, I say, well, that whatever, it's God's will, it's God's will. Fast forward, I'm 36 weeks pregnant. Um, because I had number four early, seven weeks early, they were looking at delivering early, but they wanted to get her to as full term as possible because I had gestational diabetes. You know, anytime, no matter what's going on, they want to get you to full term. And typically full term is... Um, I think the minimum 37 weeks. I was 36 weeks. I went to my appointment, let's say a Monday. The following week, they said, you know, like a Wednesday, they were going to look at during delivery. I should look out for a call from their office in reference to getting everything scheduled. Friday of that week comes and I wake up in pain. I tell my husband, I say, I think I may be in labor. Like this pain is not Braxton Hicks. You get to number five, you know what Braxton Hicks is in comparison to true labor pains. So we get our household together. We head to the hospital. They hook me up. Two hours, I'm hooked up. I'm hooked up. They check in, no dilation. It looks like false contractions. I'm telling my husband, I'm like, no, no, no. This is not false contractions. I'm in pain. You know, I would get up and go to the bathroom. I would feel that, that, um, I don't even, I can't even explain what contractions feel like, but I can feel that intense pain. And even though they say Braxton Hicks can get to an intense level, I knew that this was not normal. It felt like, almost like my, my pelvic floor was just about to fall open, right? So I'm like, no, something ain't right. The nurses was like, well, you know, it's showing up. It's not consistent. You do have some big contractions, but it's not coming consistent enough for it to be true labor. So they get my OB on the phone and my OB at the time, he's actually the son of my actual OB, my actual OB due to COVID because this was at the beginning of COVID, March 21st of this year and um, or March 20th at the time because it was the day before I delivered. And so he was on quarantine because of his health issues and he was older. So his son took over my care. And I mean, his son is great, had no issues. He got on the phone. He said, look, you know, um, I'm on, I'm not there. I'm not the actual doctor on call, but it's nothing really that's showing up. You know, I don't know what we can do. You can stay for a bit, but it's, you know, they're letting me know everything that's happening and it's showing up that it's not actual contractions. And I'm on the phone. I'm like, that's all well and good, you know, but this pain is not normal. And let me give you a backstory. I do have a high tolerance for pain. I've gone through labor with no epidural, no nothing. So and this is when I've had a natural birth. So I know how to deal with pain. So that's not my issue. However, 
it was like nobody was hearing me. It was kind of like I was screaming, kicking, shouting, but I was invisible. And that's literally how I felt. And I'm getting a little emotional because that pain was serious. And, you know, you, you don't fault anybody, but the history of the previous pregnancy, I did have a C-section. So number three, I had a C-section because his head was not crowning or he was kind of to the side or something like that. Number three comes, they gave me the option. I decided to go for a C-section, which was the best option because come to find out my uterine lining was very thin and I could have had a uterine rupture. So here we are at number four, I'm in pain and nothing is being done. So they're like, you can stay for a bit. The nursing staff is kind of very blase, like whatever. I'm not gonna talk about what hospital I had this at. Um, like I said, my OB team, that office is wonderful. Like, I've, anytime I've had any concerns, they have been very available to me. So, but it was kind of very much like, you're wasting a bed, you're not in pain. And I'm sitting here, like, telling my husband, you know, the nurse to walk out and whisper to him, like, babe, I'm in some serious pain. I don't know what's going on. Like, this hurts. So, I think another two hours go by, and it's kind of like, nothing they can do. So, we hit in the car, we go home. We're about an hour away from our house, from the hospital. We're almost home. And the pain starts to intensify to the point that literally I'm in my seat and I'm like, oh, like, and I, mind you, I have a high tolerance of pain, but that pain legit started to get like intense and I did not know what to do. Like sitting on my butt was so painful because it was like that pressure from sitting and I'm sitting there like, uh, uh, like in pain. And so I would say maybe an hour went by maybe 30 minutes. I'm telling my husband, I'm like, no, you got to call back up to the hospital. I mean, call back to the OB office. So we call back to the OB office and the doctor on duty, um, who is wonderful. Hi, Dr. Silverbrook. <laughs> She's amazing. Okay. He gets on the phone with her and she hears me in the background. And at this time I'm moaning in some serious pain. I cannot stand up straight because we made it back to the house. I mean, my bathroom on the main level and I'm literally crawling in the bathroom, like in pain. And she's like, get her back here now. We get in the car. I got a pillow. I'm in the back seat. And I really am at this point asking God to take me because the pain is so bad. I literally felt like my insides was being ripped open. And at one point I hear feel this big pop, like pop. And I'm like, okay, I, my water is about to break because in my mind, I don't know what's going on. So I hear this pop. No water is gushing at this time. I feel the baby jump up in my chest. And I'm like, God, what is going on? This pain does not feel like normal contractions because it was like totally intense. Get to the hospital. They wheel me in. I get to labor. Um, I get to uh, the, I guess, labor and delivery. Get to the check-in. They're trying to check me back in all the time. I'm like, I just left here two hours ago. I'm in pain. I don't know. Look at the system. Last name Presley. Not trying to be rude, but when you are in intense pain where you're calling on Jesus to take you now, you know you're in some pain. And this is no exaggeration. I delivered, have been had contractions with no medication and have done fine. The nurse comes out. She wheels me in the back. She goes to a little thing. She's typing everything in. Can I see your bracelet? I'm literally like shaking like this. Like my leg is shaking because I'm literally going into shock from pain. And she's like, I need you to get out this chair. And I'm like, I am in pain. Like, what do you want me to do? She's like, I need you to get out this chair and I need you to get out of your clothes. I get up in that bed. I'm like, I don't know where that mustard, that strength because my husband is parking the car. A nurse comes in. She's getting ready to check me. My husband is walking in the door where we're at. And as soon as she opened me up, the lady is there trying to find the baby's heartbeat, which she cannot find. She opens me up and blood gushes everywhere. Hello? Hello? I'm here. I said I was in serious pain. Here's the evidence. Blood shoots out everywhere. My husband was like, what the heck? Next thing you know, they start rushing and they're rushing around me. They're trying to get a vein line, trying to get in there. I got to sign a paper for a blood transfusion. They're on the phone with the doctor. Hi, Dr. Silverbrook. She's in the parking lot. She's coming and they wheel me into the room. They could not find my baby's heartbeat. So I do remember hearing that I'm put to sleep. I don't know anything else that's going on. So from my husband's perspective, he's on the outside. He's waiting 40 minutes go by. He doesn't hear nothing. He doesn't know what's going on. And apparently they didn't want to come out and worry him because they didn't know if they can save me and the baby. So they were in there trying to save us, which I am grateful that they did their job. We're here and it's by the grace of God leading their hands that we are here. 
but my baby was born and they had to resuscitate her. My stomach is pulled with blood. They can barely see what's going on. I had a uterine rupture. So, number four, baby, my record should have indicated. Her lining is thin. She had a baby's back to back, 2019, 2018. I'm sorry, 2018, 2019, now 2020. The record should have stated. Let's keep an eye on this thin lining. Or I see here in the record with the previous pregnancy, there was a thin lining. Let's keep an eye on this. I don't know. I'm not a medical professional. I don't know. You know, however, my story is not a lot of other women's story, especially African-American women. There is a huge disparity in us being believed when we are in pain or us being believed when there is an issue until the issue is life-threatening. There are a lot of women, black women particularly, who have lost their life giving birth. I don't understand why the rate of black women dying giving birth is so much higher than any other race. My only thing I can say from my experience is a lot of times we are not believed. I've been in the hospital giving birth to five different children. And I can tell you each experience has presented different things. I remember um, number three, I'm in the hospital and we are in labor and delivery. Um, I had to be, what, why was I? What happened was, no, I don't think I was being induced or anything like that. I forgot, why was I? No, this was number two. Yeah, so number two, I'm in the hospital. And I want to say they were trying to, I don't know why I was in labor and delivery, but something was going on and they needed to keep me in the hospital or something. They had given me something to deliver. Anyway, it was something. And I remember, I would never forget, her name was Amber. I'm not going to say what hospital, but me and my family always laugh about this. So they gave me the Pitocin. Yeah, so they gave me something to deliver. She's like, oh, tell her my family, y'all might as well go home. It's going to take hours for it to work. My two cousins were there with me and my husband, and they left. They weren't even gone a good 30 minutes. And um, my husband is calling them because my water breaks. I call Amber. I'm like, Amber, my water broke. Oh, no, no, your water didn't break. I'm like, Amber, my water broke. She's like, no, no, your water did not break. I hop about that bed, open my legs wide, and water is still gushing out. And she's like, oh, my goodness, your water broke. <laughs> and so then it begins and they're rushing anyway. The point of that story is I have had enough experiences, and it could just be the inexperience of certain nurses that I have. And I'm not saying all nursing staff are the same because I've delivered all four of my children minus one at this particular hospital, and I have encountered some wonderful staff, wonderful staff. But a lot of times when it comes to certain things, they just don't believe me. I remember going, and I was in pain, and it was another woman. She was not black. She was there, and um, I think this was her first child, and she was, right? And they were like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. And I'm like, hi, number three here. I'm in pain. And they're like, oh, we'll be with you. And I'm like, I know I'm in pain. And this is legit. This is number three for me. Like, hello? Anyway, the point of this is do your research. Trust your body. Trust your instincts. Let the, let the spirit lead you when you're in. Like, talk to God. He will tell you because at that moment when I left, my spirit was telling me don't leave. But my pride and my frustration of the way I was being treated led me to get up and leave. I was pissed and I got up and I left. You know, thank God we were saved, but my story could have gone a different way. My child had to be resuscitated. I had blood pooled in my stomach and we could have lost our life. But I don't know why my story is different from any other woman who has lost their life under the same circumstances other than that God had more purpose for me. And God called them home for a reason. But also, let's be mindful of speaking up. Let's be more careful with ourselves. You know, like I know that I'm guilty of it. A lot of black women I know are guilty of just being strong. I got to be strong. I got to be strong. I'm known to be strong. And society, I feel like, has put that on us a lot too. You know, and that dates back way back. I feel like they put it on us to be strong. We got to be strong. We need to, excuse me, my baby is crying, but they put it on us to be strong. 
And we take that and we put it into every area of our life. And the whole time we're dying on the inside being strong. So I just encourage any woman who is pregnant now, who's thinking about being pregnant, just listen to your body. It's okay to be in pain. It's okay to call your provider if you're in pain. My OB, the main one, the father, whenever I had a concern, he was on it. I remember I had issues with breathing. He sent me to a specialist. You know, like any issues I had, he was there and he had my back. And so did the team, you know, in that office. Like whenever I had an issue, it they had my back. Unfortunately, a lot of doctors do not speak up and fight and advocate for black women when it comes to delivering. And I will even say too, I had black nurses in the hospital and even they were kind of very dismissive. And I'm not saying that, you know, sometimes we are don't overreact giving birth, but I feel like the pain is enough when you give birth that whether I'm overreacting or not, I should be heard, period. So that's my story. I just encourage you to fight for you, advocate for you, advocate for your baby, advocate for your life. Everything won't be so extreme as this giving birth, but it's okay to speak up and it's okay to have concerns and it's okay to fight for those concerns to be looked at. You know, why not? That's what that labor and delivery, that's what the staff is for. You know, yes, sometimes they're overworked and they have things going on, but that that's an outside concern. The immediate concern is you and your baby. and You cannot control the dynamics of that hospital because if that's the case, then don't take any more patients. Tell, you, tell your doctors to go other places, other hospitals that can facilitate their patients if you are not equipped to handle it. But that's just my little spiel before we get into this beautiful, miraculous, you know, nursery. And I say beautiful, miraculous because this almost was not, but by the grace of God. And she does have grace in her middle name. And it was by God's grace that I'm here today to share my story. I'm here today to show you guys my nursery. And I hope I was not long winded. <laughs> I pray that I encourage another woman who is considering having a baby, another woman who is currently pregnant, and other women who have experienced um, uncertainty and um, just kind of dismiss labors, you know, dismiss labor pains or whatever was going on during your delivery. Um, it's okay to be in pain and it's okay to speak up for it. So let's get into the nursery reveal. I'm sorry, nursery reveal. And until next time, be bold, be beautiful, and always, always, always be you, fight for you, love you, hear you, be gentle with you, and put that same energy out for other people that you encounter.